Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, May 29th, 2020. And here are some of today's trends in the news on the market front. Over in Asia, mostly down. Over there in Europe, uh, it was down. And here in the States, mix it was down a lot, but came back up. Gold's up again. And Bitcoin down, but still over that 9,000 mark. And Earl, yeah, up a little bit. But where's it going? The S&P 500 rose slightly on Friday, erasing losses earlier in the session as traders breathe a sigh of relief. After President Trump signaled no changes to the trade deal with China, despite rising tensions. During a much awaited news conference, Trump said he would take action to eliminate special treatment towards Hong Kong. However, he did not indicate the U.S. would pull out of the phase one trade agreement reached with China early this year, easing traders' concerns for the time being. So the S&P is up now some 38 percent from its March low, but it's still down about 10 percent from its February high. And here's what they're saying in the market front. The market has discounted the coronavirus very quickly and has correctly predicted the apex of the virus in Mike Katz, partner at Seven Points Capital. You know what that is. Bullshit. You got it. The markets are totally unrelated to what's going on with the scandemic. They closed down the global economy and the way they're opening it up, it's just going to be the greatest depression. The markets have nothing to do with reality on the streets. Oil jumped nearly 90% in May. Wow, 90% in May. What do we have here? Hmm. West Texas is still 46% below, percent below its January high of 65.65, and Brent crude almost touched 70. So it's 35 bucks, basically, for Brent crude. And, with the, excuse me, for the month, Brent crude gained 39.81%. So what we're looking here at oil prices are nowhere near where they need to be for companies to make money on it. And you're going to see a lot more bankruptcies. Gold gains as uncertainty over Trump's response to China spurs demand, has nothing to do with it at all. Gold is going up because the central banks around the world are pumping in trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of fake money into the system to bring it back up. And the people that invest with gold know that the whole market situation, the equity market, is total oh, shit. You got it. So that's why gold prices are going up. Silver gained 2.5 percent, and they're saying prices went up because the restart of the economies could boost silver demand. Well, to a slight extent, gold is now almost at that level where I said where it's going to break toward 2000. And as I've been saying now for months, once it breaks that point and starts moving forward, silver is going to follow. And that's what's going on. Business gloom persists, Fed says. Businesses saw limited evidence of an economic recovery in recent weeks. And it goes on and on. This is not coming back. Disney World to gradually start opening in mid-July. Customers and staff will be required to wear masks and complete temperature checks before entering the park. And it goes on and on and on, socially distanced. They're making this crap up. They're making this crap up. You're outside if you're six feet, eight feet, four feet, three feet, two feet. Or cl Did you ever hear the wind blowing around everywhere? 
Oh, I mentioned before about oil. U.S. shale industry braced for waves of bankruptcies as oil demand collapses. U.S. set for steep discounts on apparel throughout the summer. No kidding. We only wrote about this back in February, that they're going to be stuck with all of this product, and that's why you're going to see deflationary cycle. So this is going to be a good year to buy stuff if you got money to buy it. Venezuela hopes to have gold frozen by Britain returned in order to buy food and medical supplies amid COVID-19 pandemic. They reached a deal with the United Nations to use its gold frozen by the Bank of England. The news comes two weeks after the Central Bank of Venezuela launched legal action against the Bank of England demanding to release of more than $1 billion of gold that they're holding. And this is what the slimy, very proper English had to say. The UK, how about the FU, you know what, K, refused to hand over Venezuela's gold as the British government does not recognize the government of President Nicolas Maduro after what they called a deeply flawed 2008 election. We're not going to give you back your money. We don't like what happened over there. Yeah, kind of like Obama destroying uh, Libya. Yeah, we think had gold anything to do with that and all the money that they stole after that? That election in 2018 was monitored by international monitors and shown to be legal. Not like that one in Florida where they're still counting those hanging chads and on and on. French jobless numbers surge as Europe limps out of lockdown. 23% in April. Retail sales in Spain fell 31.6% in April. German non-financial business dropped by a record 13.8%. One after another. This isn't going to bounce back. Is it going to be as bad as it was? Yes. Because it's going to go up and then go down. Up and down, up and down, down, down. Not a U shape, not a V shape, an F-U-C, you know what shape. American Airlines and Delta move to cut thousands of jobs. American Airlines said it would cut 30% of its 17,000 employed in the ranks of management and support staff. Delta, second largest airline after American, will offer retirement and buyout packages to its staff of 91,000. About 44% of Delta's employees have taken leave and about 29% of Americans have taken leave or retired early. Oh, it's going to bounce back. American carried the most debt among U.S. carriers heading into the crisis, and investors consider it most likely among U.S. airlines to declare bankruptcy. And it goes on. And now with all these restrictions they're putting on, people aren't going to be flying like they used to. Airline to cut nearly a third of its workforce. Well, I just read that. Oh, no, this is EasyJet. Beauty seller to Idol, 150 stores. This is beauty brand Glossier. Classic Miami Hotel seeks new debt terms in crisis. This is the Fountain Blue. Pandemic hits job prospects of the young hardest, says UN agency. Very important. Young people are bearing the brunt of the employment hit from the pandemic. And it goes on and on. So what does this mean? Oh, you think people were buying less houses before? Oh, you think marriage rates were going down before? You think we had drug problems and other kinds of problems before? You haven't seen anything yet. The UN agency found 
that one in six of those it surveyed in the 18 to 29 year old age group said it had stopped working since the pandemic began. Not since the pandemic began, since the low life scum, rotten, dirty, slimy politicians, politics, suck the blood out of us in the economy. Don't blame it on the pandemic. It doesn't win place or show compared to other death rates in other issues. They destroyed it. And where is the outrage? Barely any. Ah, renters out of work and money and very soon their homes. Talks about how bad it is out there and how many people can't pay their rents. Oh, that homeless problem? Poof. Ain't seen anything yet, and that was one of our top trends for 2020. Homeless and hopeless. This was going on before this happened. Pandemic speeds up debt on future of cash. Shift to card transactions raises questions across for all and shape of infrastructure for wholesale distribution. They're talking about, for example, how people aren't using ATMs anymore. The effects of the using no cash anymore felt through the banking system. ATM transaction volume fell as much as 62% year on year in the UK since the lockdown. I'm mentioning this because one of our stories in Back Trends Journals, even a cover of the Trends Journal, we're going from dirty cash that they've only been using since who knows how long to digital trash. They'll be able to follow every penny you spent, where you spent it, how you spent it, and when you spent it. So they could get all their money, these politicians, so they don't have to work anymore like they never have anyway, because they got our tax money. Big story, very important. It's the future. News Corp to halt printing at 100 Australian papers. And they said that um, they'd be closing 36 of the newspapers over there in Australia altogether. I mention this because you're not getting any news anymore. There are no, there are no feet on the beat. So we're getting just bits and pieces of news. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal to get history before you ha it happens. You're not getting it anywhere else. You're not getting anything that says, what's going on, what it means, and what's next. And that's why you subscribe to the Trends Journal. And please do what you can to spread the word, subscribe. The more subscribers we have, the more we can do. While they're going down, we're going up. We're spreading the words of freedom, liberty, love, joy, and beauty that these low lives have sucked out of our lives, and we're fighting to get it back. So we need your help to do it. Tuesday morning, files for bankruptcy. Discount Home Goods retailer Tuesday Morning Corp became the latest company to seek bankruptcy protection. Nissan, $6.2 billion loss forces cuts. Honda recalls cars due to fuel pump issue. What am I going to recall? 1.3 million. And Toyota cited a similar problem. They recalled 3.18 million. I'm mentioning this because they're giving us the absolute bullshit of driverless cars when they can't fix simple problems. It's not going to happen for a long time. Restaurants wrestle with new model. Restaurants <laughs> that built their business on keeping seats full are trying to figure out how to run at a fraction of capacity. And they go on and on and on. They're not going to be able to run. You look at the numbers. They already, one after another, declaring bankruptcy, going out of business. One Denny's Corp franchise is closing 15 restaurants in New York, laying off 500 people. An owner of 49 IHOP restaurants in four states cited stay-at-home mandates in its bankruptcy filing. 
It goes on and on, one after another, going out of business. It's going to bounce back. The markets have nothing to do with the reality. Many want to keep working from home. And this is a big trend because, again, think of all the restaurants, all the businesses in the commercial areas that support people going to work. And now more are going to be working from home. So those things are going to go down, as are colleges, towns, the new Rust Belts 2.0, as colleges only have online, and all those businesses that depended on colleges are gone. Tech firms were the first to send employees home when the outbreak paralyzed the U.S. in March. When the outbreak paralyzed the U.S.? No! When slimy, low-life politicians and a disgusting media started selling fear and hysteria. It's all detailed in your trends journals and the cover's going way back. And it's these little geekless little nothings that started the scare. These little nothing boys, like the cooks and the Suckerbergs with an F. They're the ones that spread the fear. And everybody's buying it. When I say everybody, the majority. Heil Hitler, march to Mussolini. Salute Stalin and bend down to cook. Because that's what you're going to get when you got a Zuckerberg, a Dorsey, all these other tough guys fearful of the virus that's killing the elderly, the chronically ill, people suffering from other diseases, not healthy people. We won't talk about building your immune system. We'll talk about being a cowardly freak because that's who's leading the charge, the cowardly freaks and the people following. Ah, Sweden's economy actually grew in the first quarter, after it opted against the full virus lockdown. Isn't that something? Their economy went up. Oh, yeah, but they got like 4,500 people that died. Yeah. Mostly elderly, over 50%, chronically ill already. Oh, and a population of 10 million. And they're still living a life. German statistical office has forecast Europe's growth engine will plunge by 10%. But Sweden's still open. And what else do we have here? National Guard called out as Minnesota protests continue. What that slimy cop and the other ones did to that poor George Floyd. Disgusting. Disgusting. Murder. Murder in the first degree right in front of our eyes. This is going to explode big time. Again, the people that are getting hit the hardest are the lower classes, the lower economic class, blacks and Hispanics. You're going to see a summer of riots this summer like it's going to be back in the 60s. And even worse, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And as a result, the militarized police are going to become more militarized. If we don't have peace... And beauty and freedom, you can see where this is going. I mentioned before about Trump's speech to Hong Kong. And then we heard Pompeo going on, U.S. preparing to punish China over Hong Kong. U.S. rebukes China as Beijing tightens grip on Hong Kong. One after another, China tightens its grip on Hong Kong and all the details in between. History is repeating itself. The yuan, the Chinese currency, is at a 2008 low. Ah, they're lowering it so they could export more product. Fine, whatever you want to believe. Currency war, trade war, world war. Depression right in the middle of it. That was World War II. We had a currency war and a trade war against Japan. Great Depression came, World War II. The same thing is happening right now with China. Currency war, trade war, greatest depression, world war. 
When all else fails, they take you to war. When I asked people to subscribe to the Trends Journal, it's so we could do more to stop this. I'll put my track record up of forecasting trends against anybody's. First, bring all your books that you've written, all the magazines, and all the data, and then we could talk. I'm a visionary, and I see the way things are going leading us to war. What happened in Minneapolis was a spark that ignited a civil war in America. This is going to escalate dramatically as the economy begins to collapse. We need peace, and if we don't unite for it, we're going to die in war. And I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace. France will relax travel restrictions inside the country, blah, 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 allow cafe schools to open. Oh, sounds good, doesn't it? Restaurants and bars in Paris will only be able to serve customers at outdoor terraces, theaters, gyms, and swimming pools can reopen June 2nd. <laughs> but they're going to have the cinemas nationwide will start screening February, January 22nd. But of course, they're going to have regulations. Even outside Paris, life is a long way from returning to normal. Travelers must wear masks on all public transport. And foreign travel is all but stopped until at least June 15th. Nightclubs remain closed. And, quote, social distancing and special hygiene measures remain in force in offices, factories, and restaurants. The new abnormal. Look at your trends journal. This is what it is, and people are calling it the new normal. Italians return to beach with a nod towards six feet of separation. Again, more crap. New York issued mask order. And we got that arrogant, arrogant daddy's boy, Andy Cuomo, shooting off his fat mouth, fat mouth again. Oh, he left his mask on the desk after he gave the speech the other day. And here's what he goes on to say. As and we, we, meaning you and me, and we have, we have to, culturalize the masks. Culturalize the masks. Making it become part of the culture. Like the Chinese, huh? Yeah, another Trends Journal cover. Tank Man 2.0. The Chinese way, you must obey, you must obey the king, the little boy dictator, or is it dictator, Andy Cuomo, because that's all it is. Shit coming out of his arrogant mouth. We have to customize the masks for New York to get New Yorkers to wear them. And he was surrounded by his daily briefing, two celebrities. No, celebrities. Who are the celebrities? Chris Rock and uh, Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez decried hipsters and yuppies she encountered who are not wearing masks. What is it? Is it arrogance? No, it's your stupidity. It's your ignorance, not my arrogance. And baby cakes, I ain't a yuppie, and I'm not a hipster. I'm an intelligent man that knows data, which you and the others know nothing about. All you are are followers of the leaders of Slavelandia. So save your arrogant crap for someone else. And as I said, Andy boy, you want to put a mask on me? Come and do it without bringing you guys like the ones that murdered George Floyd. Long pandemic lockdown in Ohio. Exacts heavy price. All the people going under. The opiate addictions. People calling up. Problems one after another. Drunk. Oh, yeah, but booze is an essential business. 
one problem after another. And the morons running the show. Social distancing ambassadors on the move. This is in New York. They got 2,800 people or something going through the parks telling you to social distance. They're making this crap up. The morons are in charge. The power hungry social distancing ambassadors. You go on the beach, the wind blows outside. You're outside, the wind blows six feet. You're making this shit up. Every day they're making crap up. And to be fair, the masses are swallowing it. Here we go. Associated Press survey found 76% of dumbo craps wore masks outside of the house compared with 59% of the repulsive kins. Some 84% of the blacks wore masks with 64% on whites. Across the board. And then Brazil's daily virus deaths top U.S. Huh. Daily virus deaths, top U.S. How many people died over there in, uh, in Brazil? Let's see. They have 125,000 people. So far, 24,000 people have died. 24,000 out of 125,000. Tired of cooking? Delivery and takeout offer safe alternatives. This is how stupid it's become. Safe alternatives. How risky is the packaging? What should I order? What about utensils? What should I be worried about? You should be worried about being a gutless, stupid little freak who buys this crap. Again, if we don't unite, you can see where this is going. When all else fails, they take you to war. So please, subscribe to the Trends Journal. Tell your friends. And thank you for all of you that do subscribe. This is Gerald Salenti. And that's some of today's Trends in the News. The COVID-19 war has changed the world. But who's prepared? What's next? It's in your Trends Journal. Trends Journal subscribers are prepared. Subscribe to the Trends Journal. Read history before it happens from the world leader in trend forecasting.